Hi everybody, I'm Dr. K, creator of LiftHardPlayHard.com, and I'm so glad that you could join me today for another video in the series of exercising to the point of exhaustion. Now I know that the name sounds like it's out there, but it's important that we define what exhaustion really is. So let's talk about heart rate training versus perceived exertion. Now, there are many different perceived exertion scales, two are that, are, that are the most popular, 6 to 20, which is known as the Borg scale, and works phenomenally to be able to predict heart rate, has a direct correlation to heart rate. We'll talk about that in a moment. You see, there's like a smiley face scale that tells you where are you on a, on a scale of 6 to 20, and you can just add a zero to that number and predict your heart rate very accurately. So, for example, if you were looking at this chart and you were at 13, it's very likely that you're beating plus or minus 5 beats a minute at 130 beats per, per minute. So that's a great way of really assessing heart rate without a heart rate monitor, but let's talk about perceived exertion the way that I like to use it. Let's talk about it on a scale of 0 to 10. 10 is like point of exhaustion passing out, and 0 is laying in bed, nothing at all. Where do you stand right now? You see, when you're exercising for fat loss, you really want to be training with intervals. Intervals that go as high as a 9.5 out of 10, almost passing out exhaustion and as low as a 3 or a 4 out of 10, where you really feel like you're just coasting and you're barely moving. In fact, it's not much harder than just standing up and being able to stand quietly and talk. You see, that is perceived exertion, and that's the way to interval train. If you're cardiovascularly training and you want to stay within a good range there, I recommend usually a 7 or an 8 out of 10. If you're new to an exercise program, I recommend a perceived exertion of a 6 to an 8, working on building intensity over time. But remember, when we're talking about exercising to the point of exhaustion, let's be clear. Perceived exertion is a much better tool and a much better measurement than heart rate ever could be. The truth is, it's all relative to you anyways. No matter what my age predicted heart rate max is, if I'm training correctly, I'm going to boost up my actual real maximum heart rate. You see, an age predicted heart rate max might be 220 minus your age as the easy formula. Now, if you're in Lift Hard Play Hard, you've already found out I have a target heart rate calculator where you just plug in the numbers you're looking for and it spits it out for you. Just a neat little tool. However, if you take 220 minus your age, I'm 27 years old, that puts me at 193 beats per minute. Well, I happen to know that I've achieved a heart rate of 201 beats per minute recently. So if that's the case, that means that I've overcome my age predicted heart rate max. Now, what does that mean? That means that I've been able to train my, my lactate threshold and my maximum heart rate, or my VO2 max, the amount of oxygen my body, can, my body can take as my blood's flowing very quickly through my vessels. I've trained that to be much higher than what would be normal for my age group, and that's why heart rate training may not be as accurate as you think. That's why perceived exertion is so important when you're interval training and you're supposed to reach that higher level and higher level and higher level every time that you work out because it shouldn't be easier tomorrow than it was today just because you're in better shape. It should be perceived exertion. Now, when you're heart rate training, that's excellent for a lot of reasons, but that's not how you exercise to the point of exhaustion. It's a good measurement tool, as I said, but when you're, when you're heart rate training, you're really trying to stay either in a cardiovascular zone if you're looking at the old school method, your fat burning zone of 40 to 60% heart rate max, although that really isn't the way to go unless you have diabetes or, or cardiac disease as far as I'm concerned. You really want to hit the higher intensity, build lactic acid, and have that flush through your system. You see, when you're heart rate training, it's a great way to relieve stress, improve endorphin release, to be able to decrease cholesterol, blood pressure. I talk all about all the purposes, not just weight loss, in weightlosscardio.com, and you are welcome to take a look. Again, it's a free trial like everything else that I have out there because get results then then we'll worry about the finances that's the way to treat your health if you ask me anyways let's diverge back over to perceived exertion when you're exercising to the point of exhaustion you're exercising properly for a fat loss program I can't drill this point home enough you really need to take yourself to a nine or nine and a half out of ten now when I'm interval training I do this on many different time frames and time references for example, in personal video boot camp in month one, it's 50 seconds on and 10 seconds off. So for 50 seconds, I'm at that 9 or 9.5 out of 10, and for the 10 seconds, I am just chilling. I am just allowing myself to relax as much as possible because it's not a long rest. Now, to really truly get down to 3 or 4 out of 10, you usually need about 30, 30 to 90 seconds rest depending on your fitness level. So alternation of intervals as high as 50 seconds on or as low as 20 or 30 seconds on would be great for your high for your high interval of nine or nine and a half out of ten when it comes to really ramping down the minimum time frame is 10 seconds and a lot of people would suggest upwards of 90 seconds to really let your system cool down so you can push for that maximum intensity on the on the very next round again I'm dr. K creator of lift hard play hard .com, and thank you for joining me today